Thank you for tuning to HR Revivals. So it's the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah, Father. Hide me behind the cross. It'd be none of me, but all of you. Smith of this is a clay, and everybody leave here singing. I got just what I wanted and more from the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait for a few people to tune in with me this morning. Glory. Hallelujah. I already feel the glory of God getting strong on me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Going to wait for a few people to tune in. Good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you. I'm glad you could tune in today. Brother Paul, hallelujah. Glad to see you on here this morning. Going to wait for just a few more people to tune in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Are y'all excited this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. Are y'all excited this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Michelle, God bless you, sister. Glad you could tune in today. Lord, let this camera hold up and let her be able to see the whole message. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to entitle this message... The signs. What are the signs of the reprobate mind? What are the signs of the reprobate mind? This word is a right now word from the throne of Almighty God for everyone watching. Ro Robin, God bless you. God bless you, brother. I'm glad you could tune in today. And God bless you to the other person that just tuned in. Hallelujah. What are the signs of a reprobate mind? That's what I'm preaching about today. And if you got your Bibles, turn there with me to the book of Romans chapter 1, verses 20 through 30. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 1, verses 20 through 30. In these next few verses we're gonna show you by the word of god what's going on with a lot of people in today's society good morning sister regina god bless you i'm glad you could tune in thank you jesus i want everybody to understand what's going on in today's society so i'm talking about what are the signs of a reprobate mind hallelujah jesus so let's begin thank you jesus Turn with me to verse 20. For his invisible attributes, that it that is his eternal power, has shown, has shown it to them. For his invisible at wait a minute. For his invisible attributes, that is his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. They did not glorify him, anyway, through what he has made, as a result, people are without excuse for Though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, in, instead, their thinking became worthless and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory. Mm. It says, thinking themselves wise, they became fools. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. And exchanged the glory. Somebody said they exchanged the glory. Of the immortal, immortal God, for images resembling mortal man, birds, four-footed animals, and reptiles. They, they changed the uncorruptible God and made him a corruptible image. They, they made an image and said, this is our God. Look at this, though. Verse 26. For this reason, God delivered them over to disgraceful passions. 
There, women exchange natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. Women with women, men with men. Men in the same way also left natural relations with women and were in and were with men. They were inflamed in their lust for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in their own persons the appropriate penalty of their error. Wait one minute. Do you know God was talking about AIDS right there? Because it said they received the appropriate penalty for their actions. Now, I'm going to talk about the grace of God today, but I want you to understand what's going on with the, with the mindset of this generation. They've got what the Bible calls a reprobate mind. They've got a mindset that is useless. they got a mindset that is not of God. Actually, in the 1950s, the word came about meaning God had rejected them. I want you to understand something. If they would not believe their minds were turned over. It said they knew, so they were without excuse, and they still decided to not believe God. And there was sin in their heart, and they began to follow after things that were not natural, not God's original design. I know I'm going to probably tick a lot of people on Facebook off this morning, and YouTube as well, but that's all right. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I'm not going to patty cake Christianity with anybody. I'm going to tell you like it is, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And I will be preaching a second message, so those who didn't get to tune into the first one will be able to tune into the second one. Thank you, Jesus. For this reason, God delivered them over to disgraceful passions. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind so that they do that which is not right. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, arrogant, bless God, proud, boastful, inventors of evil devices, disobedient to parents, senseless, unworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they know God is just, God's just sentence, that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but they applaud others who practice them. That's what that gay pride parade is about. They're, they're parading and, and celebrating others who do these things that they do themselves. Knowing that there's a penalty for their sin. The Bible speaks about it, that they would be like these in the last days. This thing was going to run rampant. There's more people with the identity complex not knowing who they are, let alone whose they are, and they're going around getting with everything that's not natural because their mind's under a supernatural delusion. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I hope this is a good word this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I can already feel the embers of hell getting hot. They're, the devil's mad about this message this morning, boy. I tell you, glory to God. Hallelujah. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind, so a reprobate mind, so that they do what is not right. They are full of envy, it says, and it goes on to list what they're full of. Verse 32 said, They know the sentence, God's just sentence, that those who practice these things deserve to die. They not only do them, though, but even applaud others who practice them. 
Lord have mercy. I'm here to tell you something. It's time we quit playing patty cake with the church. Get up there and tell them, repent, saith God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, grace is wonderful. I am a grace preacher. I believe in the grace of God. But I do believe in preaching that we need to live by a moral standard of God's morality. God's morality. Thank you, Jesus. The reason that why there's immorality is because there is no morality. There's no fear of God. There's no reverence is the word I'm looking to use. There's no reverence or love for the word of God. So there's no fear of God. There's no participation in the word of God by people. A lot of people want to look holy. They got a form of godliness, but they deny his power. You know, I tell you what, a friend of mine was listening to a minister that he dearly admired a long time ago. And this minister responded back to him after he put a comment when that minister called God an it, he said, did he just call God an it? And that minister responded that basically, let me tell you what he said in a nutshell, that he did not believe that God wrote his own word, that it was wrote by man and that God was inspired by man. He did not believe the God of the Bible. He rejected the God of the Bible. The Bible said in the last days there would come up people preaching damnable heresies, even going as far as to deny the Lord who bought them. Why? Because they've got a reprobate mind. They've got a rejected mind, a useless mind. See, reprobate mind don't just go for homosexuality. It goes for all of those things listed in that word today. Thank you, Jesus. It goes for so much more. They've got a mindset that's useless. They're a hater of the word of God. You bring the word of God to them, you're just like slapping them in the face, and they'll slap you back because I tell you, they're out of their mind. They're not in the mindset of God. Let this mind that is in Jesus be in you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you, there's a family member of mine, my cousin Jake. My cousin Jake jumped out of the hole in his church window because he said, I will not serve God. But the word came to him by the Lord. God spoke to him and he said, surely this is the only time I will deal with your soul. Repent and come to me. And he jumped out the whole of his church window. He says, I will not serve God. Jump out the hole in his church window. And he said when he jumped out of the window, he said he felt the Spirit of God depart from him. And he lived the rest of his life a child of the devil. 10 or 15 years. And then he died without Christ. He had a reprobate mind. Because he did not want to give up his habits. He didn't want to give up the womanizing, the drinking. He, he didn't want to give up the, the stuff. The pleasures of this flesh is what took his soul to hell. Thank you, Jesus. Which recollects another memory. A family member of mine, my great-great-grandmother, great-great-great-grandmother, she heard a man every day on the way to school. She would hear this man crying out to them on the way to church. There is, there is no God, he would say to them. The Bible says a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But look at this. He would say there was no God. There is no God. He would say that for years. And then on his way out of this world, he called all of the young children to his side that he had said there was no God to. And he told them, he said, I lied to you. He said, I did this to get attention from you. He said, I believe and know there's a God. 
People say, oh, I believe in God. You do good. The Bible said people both believe and tremble. The demons both believe and tremble at the name of God. They know there's a God, too, and they both believe and tremble. They believe in God, but that don't mean they're saved, friend. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But he would say there was no God. Walking down the street with him, there was no God. And then he called him and he said, I believe there's a God. And I know there is. And he said, I've denied him for the last time. And there's no place for me to go but with the devil because Satan is at my headboard of my bed and the fires of hell are leaping at my feet. And he died and went to hell. He had a reprobate mindset. He done it for attention. The Bible says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? He gave his eternal soul for a little attention. Knowing he was wrong, knowing what he said to those children was wrong. My great, great granny McKay actually died and went to hell because she believed the lie that he had preached all those years that there was no God. She turned against God. And on her deathbed, her eyes were battleship gray as she rejected the Lord. She had a reprobate mindset. You and I need to keep our mind focused on Jesus. The Bible said he gives shalom, shalom, perfect peace. Shalom, shalom to those whose mind is set on him. Thank you, Jesus. Let this mind that is in Christ be in you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I hope people are getting blessed by this message this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me say this concerning coming to Him. The Bible says in Genesis 6 and 3 that my spirit will not always strive with man. I'm not always going to deal with them about coming to salvation because the heart of a man is so wicked. I'm trying to get somebody saved this morning. I don't usually preach this kind of way, but the Lord's dealing with somebody's heart about repentance about coming to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Last night's show was amazing. I talked about the power you knew not of, coming out of darkness and into the power of God. We're getting emails of people loving the show, and I'm getting uh, text messages of people being healed and delivered while watching the show last night. It's the power of God unto salvation. Good morning, Brother Chapman. It's the power of God unto salvation. I saw Sister Hetty tune in there. Thank you, Jesus. He said, my spirit will not always strive with men. You know, there's going to be people that think they got it right, and they're going to stand before God and find out they had it all wrong. Because he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Those are the scariest words to ever hear anybody preach. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Let alone speak. Those words would be terrifying. Those words are terrifying. They still send shivers down the very spine of my soul to think about those words. I thank God I'll never hear those words, but I'll hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? That's why... Because of a reprobate mind, that's why people blaspheme the Holy Ghost. There's no forgiveness for blasphemy against the Holy Ghost of God. But that's why people do it, because of a reprobate mind. They got a useless mind. They don't focus on the Lord. They, don't, they, they hate God, so they blaspheme the Holy Ghost. What's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? Speaking against the Spirit of God. Calling that which is good evil. Watch out now. I'm trying to help you. Thank you, Jesus. 
That's why you got so many people walking away from the kingdom of God today. They got a reprobate mind. They got a useless mind. They, they don't want to follow the things of God. They want to follow the things of their flesh. That's what the Bible said. Paul said to Timothy, come quickly to me, Timothy, for Demas has left me loving this present world. Actually, the Lord just told me this is the only message I'm going to preach today. So if you're getting blessed by it, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How would you know if you did that? Okay, Michelle, this is what Dad Hagen said a long time ago. Kenneth Hagen said, if you're worried about committing that, you haven't committed that. Because they... Those who blaspheme the Holy Ghost know God's Word. They know God's Word. They know who He is. And they call God evil. For you to speak evil against the Holy Spirit is blasphemy against Him. That's exactly what it is. But, you know, those who love Him won't speak evil against Him, so that sin will never come from their lips. Thank you, Jesus, because that's why... David said, I hide your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. But I want to get back to that one sin real quick. Homosexuality. Do you know it is spiritual murder? Because you can't bear children a man with a man. It's not natural. It, it, it's disgusting. Let me say this. I'm telling you what I know. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. God gave me the mind of Christ because before I knew him, I was bound by immorality. I was bound by bisexuality. But God gave me a new mind. He gave me a mind of Christ. And I have become a man because of God. I become a man of God because of God. I have the mind of of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I hope people are getting blessed by this message this morning. I hope people are sharing this message this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. You know what? This kind of stuff gets the LGBT so mad because they don't want to admit there's a God. Because if they admit there's a God, they're accountable to him. They're accountable to hold up and live by what's in this book. They're, they're being held up to what's in this book. They got to live by the word of God. Every man will give an account. The Bible said at one time God, over, he, he winked. That's how the word in the book of Acts describes it. He winked at foolishness. He, he looked, he gave, he, he just looked past it. Not really looking past it. He he said, I know that they don't know what they're doing. But now causes every man, every woman, every child to repent. Thank you, Jesus. He causes everyone to repent. The word repent means to change your mind and turn a different direction. You know, I love what Einstein one time said. That doing the same thing and expecting different results is foolishness. It's uh, basically you're an oxymoron. You're doing the same thing and expecting to get different results. What kind of person is that? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. But God gave a grace, a space of grace to repent. He gives you a grace to repent. I know about His grace now. I done talked about the judgment of God. Let me talk about the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation 2, 2 through 1. A space of grace was given for them to repent. But because... They did not repent. They were thrown into a sick bed with the spirit of Jezebel. 
A sick bed, a bed of sickness. What do you get in a sick bed? What do you get in a bed of sickness? If you got a spirit of homosexuality, you get AIDS. Literally, the Bible speaks about AIDS before AIDS ever showed up on the scene. God prophesied that there would come a day when people would become sick for laying with one another. And they would get their proper dues. But God is a God of grace. If you are bound up by homosexuality, there is forgiveness for that today. There is healing for that in your heart. There is deliverance if you'll reach out and receive what God has got for you today. This message goes out from my heart to all of those who who need the word of God in their life today, I know everybody needs to hear this message because it might explain why some of your colleagues at work, why some of your friends acting backwoods crazy, all right? Thank you, Jesus. That's why there's a lot of shotgun weddings going on today. A lot of shotgun weddings going on because a lot of people are acting crazy because they don't believe the truth of the word of God. You know, I like <clears throat> I like what um, one guy said. You want the truth. You want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Jack Nicholson, I think. Yeah, Jack Nicholson. You want the truth. You want the truth. You can't handle the truth. There's so many people today that can't handle the truth. That's why they go away and go into their own thing. They do that which is not right. They have a form of godliness, but deny his power. <coughs> That's really what blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is, to deny the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. People getting blessed, I know it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That, that was in Revelation 2, 21, about the bed of sickness. Thank you, Jesus. My cousin Jake was such a person with a reprobate mind that he jumped out of the church of the holiness window. Help me, Jesus. This is a good word. I know it is. It's a strong word. It's tight, but it's right. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you, the Bible, the reason why God is bringing this strong delusion is because they love not the truth of God's word. They would not hear it. They would not believe it. So the Bible declares that he turned them over to a reprobate mind, but also saying that Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 through 12 shows us what he did. Because they refused to believe the truth, they would not hear the word of God. He brought a strong delusion that they might believe a lie and be damned because they loved not the truth of God's word. They didn't want to hear the truth. They didn't want to handle the truth. Because once you hear the truth, you become responsible for it. I know this message is going around the world today, and I thank God for it. That people are tuning in and they're hearing the word of God today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Why? Do people believe the lie because their spirit's been seared with a hot iron? First Timothy 4 and 2. They go into these lies, believing these damnable heresies of doctrines of devils and demons. I did a sermon on this a while back called Do Dr. Devil, Mr. Hyde. It's the doctrine of devils and demons. That's why they're believing this stuff, and that's why they're going into the lie to be damned. Because they don't want to hear the truth. They're having itching ears. But God wants to put spiritual calamine lotion on their ears today. Calamine, whatever you say it. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, God, for this word today. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's 
where all these damnable heresies come from today. Because their spirits are seared with a hot iron. <clears throat> So what is one of the signs of a reprobate mind? They call good evil and evil good. They think no thought of what's right. They just got a mindset to do that which is evil. Isaiah 5.20, they call good evil and evil good. Thank you, Jesus. They got no... They're lukewarm. A lot of Christians who go into the world and, and, and don't repent, just want to keep living for the world, they're lukewarm. And he'll spew them out of their mouth, out of his mouth, unless they repent and get caught on fire for God. Thank you, Jesus. For those watching, I'm not condemning anybody. I'm telling you what the Word of God says, and I'm telling you there's a way out by His grace and by His power. There is a way out this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. If you're watching this message, and you're feeling conviction of sin, and you're in one of those sins that I'm talking about, there's a way out. Because if you're feeling conviction, even though you've been doing all this stuff, God's dealing with your heart to come to Him today. You can still be forgiven. You can still be healed, delivered, set free, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. God's promise is still for you if you'll come to Him. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to free people from a reprobate mind. He wants to heal people before their mind becomes so corrupt they lose their mind. That's what happened in the book of Daniel. Chapter 5, I believe it is. In the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind. Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind. He went out into the wilderness for seven years. You want to talk about the grace of God? God told him that he would restore the kingdom. Even in the dream, he said, the roots were still there of the tree. It wasn't uprooted. He said, I'm going to shave everything off. There's this heavy stuff that's making you think you're bigger than me. God said, I'm going to take that out of the equation and I'm going to show you who I really am. But then after I've Taking this out of the equation, I'm still going to restore your kingdom. That's the grace of God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Because after he saw that, a little time later, he tried to... Got a rim shot there. He tried to act right and he tried to prove to God he was doing the right things and he, he, he thought he got over on God and one day he was looking out of his kingdom and the Bible said while the words were still hot upon the lips of Nebuchadnezzar while the words were still hot upon his lip while the words were still upon his lips God passed judgment against him because he didn't want Belt uh, ooh, wrong, wrong one. Nebuchadnezzar to say that thing. He didn't say it. He never got it out of his mouth. The Bible said it was still upon the lips of the king. And God said, this is what I'm going to do for seven years. I'm stripping your kingdom from you. You'll go out into the wilderness. He was naked, and the Bible says that hair grew all over his body for seven years. Hair grew all over his body. His nails become elongated. His, his whole body, he became the first wolf man there ever was. And that is really why I do believe that there are people that go out there claiming to be the wolf man and drinking blood and biting people because literally they've got a reprobate mind. Their mind is gone. That's why the insane asylums are filled up. People got a reprobate mind. They got a useless mind. And they need the mind of Christ. Help me, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. And I believe most of what we're going to see in the, uh, in, in the uh, insane asylums is because of drug overdose. It's because of drug 
miscountability. They're, they're not doing what they should with these uh, doctor's meds and these doctors are overdosing their mind. They're, they're, they're giving them too much medication or the wrong medication and they know it. And these people are literally losing their mind. It's called the spirit of pharmacia. And that spirit of pharmacia is in even the church today. That's why people are losing their mind. They're calling it this and that, but it's not this or that. It's one thing. It's the spirit of pharmacia that's holding people bound in their minds. It's holding them hostage. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. This is a good word today, Lord. I give you the glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Daniel 4, that's it. Daniel 4, 16. I thought I lied, underlined that. I did. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't see that there. Daniel 4.16 talks about what happened. After seven years, his mind was restored. And the very first thing he said, God gives kingdoms to those who he desires, and he takes away kingdoms. Daniel 4.16. Out of his mind for seven complete years, and then God put him back in his right mind. Like the lady that got saved Sunday for 10 years, she was out of her mind. Didn't know who she was or nothing. And she was, she was strung out when she came into church. Never heard, never heard, never heard the word of God. 60 years of age, never heard the word of God. Never opened up a Bible and never stepped foot in a church. Stepped foot that day in the house of God and was restored in her mind, was saved and was delivered from the enemy. Only God can do that, friends. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. And we're going to be baptizing her Saturday. This Saturday, tomorrow, after I preach in the morning, I'll be live at 7 o'clock in the morning, by the way. After I preach tomorrow's message in the morning, we're going to do a live video Facebook baptism at the lake in Winder, Georgia. You do not want to miss that. We're going to be celebrating her new life with her in Jesus Christ. It's going to be a time of rejoicing. It's going to be a time of, of celebration. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Sister Carla, God bless you. Glad you could tune in. Amen. Let me tell you this. For those who are feeling convicted of their sin today, I want you to understand. He said, such were some of you before you became born again. Ephesians. Ephesians declares that. If you enjoyed this message today, y'all, thank you, Jesus. If you've enjoyed this message, send me a like or a thumbs up or something. Message me on Facebook. Let me know what God has done for you today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Share this with all of your friends and loved ones. This thing should be having at least 40 shares by the time I get off the air. Thank you, Jesus. Because it's time we preach against this stuff. Against homosexuality and all this other garbage. Like abortion. That's garbage. It's just trashy to do that. It's murder in the first degree. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. If you still feel conviction, there is still hope. Thank you, Jesus. Not Ephesians. That's the one I want to go to next. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. I'm almost done. I'm going to close in two more scriptures. I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. Thank you, Jesus.
Why did that minister speak like he did, that one that my friend knew, the one that he admired? Because that minister now has a reprobate mind. He's lost his mind. He's gone from that which is of God into the things which are not of God. Bless you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. First Corinthians 6 and 11. And then we're getting ready to close. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, go to verse 9. Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom? Is it, don't you know that the right unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be deceived. No sexual immoral person, adulterers, adulteresses, or males who have sex with males. No thieves, greedy people, drunkards, verbal abusive people. Mm, they lie and say, oh, you ain't no good. Who do you think you are? You ain't a man of God. You ain't a woman of God. Verbal abusers. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It said God will do away with those people. Wait, wait, essentially immoral, but the Lord and the Lord for their body, God raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are a part of Christ's body? So you should, so should I take part of Christ's body and make it a part of a prostitute? Absolutely not. Don't you know that anyone joined to a prostitute is one body with her? For scripture says the two will become one flesh. That's how Jezebel stole the powers of the prophets of God. And I, ooh, I, I jumped ahead. I, was, I went to the wrong scripture, y'all. But somebody needed to hear that. Get out of the bed with Jezebel and get in the Word of God. Get, get back in love with your first love again. Uh, Revelation 2, 4 through 5. Thank you, I don't know why God allowed me to skip to that. Go on <laughs> go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 10. No thieves, greedy people, drunkards, verbal abusive people, or swindlers, thieves, will inherit God's kingdom. And some of you used to be like this, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Thank you, Jesus. I went a little bit further down. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12 is what I read. Uh, it, it's in 1 Corinthians 6 when I was reading about a prostitute and all that other stuff. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody needed to hear that. If you sleep with a prostitute, if you've been going around and you've been laying with every prostitute on the street, you're a part of them. That's an ungodly soul tie that needs to be broken. If you've, if you've repented, wonderful. Praise God that you've repented. But some people need to be delivered from soul ties, ungodly soul ties. Come out from among them. Come out. Be separated from them. God is going to separate some things today by his word. The Bible calls it rightfully divine, the word of truth. The Bible said the word of God is quick, sharper than any two-edged sword, rightfully divine, the word of truth, even bringing asunder of bone and marrow. What's he doing? He's going to break down the very thing that's breaking your life down. If you'll let him. Thank you, Jesus. Now you can go to Ephesians. I'm closing, like I said, this is my third altar call. Ephesians, getting ready to close. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Ephesians 5, 26. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Actually, verse 25, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of the water by the word. God wants to wash over you. He wants his love, his grace, his mercy, his peace 
to wash over you. Today you need to be set free from the things that used to keep you. You need to be set free from it. God's given you an opportunity by His grace alone to come to salvation and deliverance. Glory to God, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. This message was for somebody today. I know somebody was watching this and got just what they wanted and more from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you're lost or backslid, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe you died on the cross. That God the Father raised you from the dead. And I am saved in Jesus' name. Lord, fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Your preaching is reaching my job because I was talking about this message. Praise God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. She's playing this message while she's working at that assembly line. She's playing this message, and God's word is going forth in the assembly line. Hey, hey, glory to God. Lord, I thank you right now. She touches every box, everything she touches, Lord, that you're using her to be a ministering tool for your glory, Lord, that you're using her her, and as she begins to roll this down the assembly line, people are going to be convicted of their sins and become saved. Jump on them, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Bless you, Holy Ghost. I am so glad that people tuned into this message today. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness. I command it to loose your body, loose your spirit, loose your mind, and let them go free right now. Every devil of sickness, I command it to loose you and let you go free. Father, I thank you for creative miracles now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now for what you've already begun to do in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, Father, for a creative miracle right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for healing, for deliverance, for salvation. God, I thank you, Lord, right now for a creative miracle in people's mindsets. Lord, deliver them in their mind. For you give shalom, shalom to those whose mind is set upon you. Double peace, shalom, shalom, to those whose mind is set upon you. Perfect peace, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, Dad, I'm glad to see you on here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll be over there tonight to that celebration. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Now, if you're bound up, I curse every devil of bondage. I command it to loose your spirit, mind, body, and soul. I command it to let you go free. Every addiction receive an eviction by holy conviction. Go, 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 go. Come out of them. Loose their spirit. Loose their mind. Loose their body. Let them go free. I charge you by Christ Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come out of them, you devils of torment. Torment in the mind, torment in the body. Now, for those somebody's watching this, the Lord just told me to give this word of knowledge. God is healing somebody of markers in your blood. You you had AIDS, but you had repented of your sins and you had found Christ, but you still had the markers in your blood. Because of God's amazing grace, he's removing those markers right now. God needed to let somebody know that, so he told me to say that. He's removing the markers from your blood. They're not going to find any sign of AIDS when they go back. HIV, AIDS, it's all gone. The markers are being removed from your blood right now. God is literally dividing the word of truth, dividing that body part by the blood of Jesus. The liver and the organs are being healed right now. The intestines are being healed. What you got from that dirty needle is not going to be in your blood anymore. Hep C is being delivered and healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody's being delivered and healed from hepatitis C. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Ooh, I'm excited about this message. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord, I thank you for everybody that tuned in this morning. Lord, I thank you, God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord Jesus. Now, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and in fire, and out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Do it now, Lord. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Fire. 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 Washing of the water of the word. In Jesus' name. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Fire. In Jesus' name. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah on high. You don't want to miss tomorrow's message, friends. Tomorrow I'm preaching about God has set you up for a beautiful blessing. You don't want to miss that word. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. I'm going to be talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost tomorrow. I'm going to be talking about the power of God unto salvation tomorrow. So if, you, if you've never had the baptism of the Holy Ghost or if you've if you want a refreshing in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Write to me, won't you? Kid Henry, K I D D H E N O Y 617 at gmail.com. K I D D H E N O Y 617 at gmail.com. I want to celebrate your new life with you. I want to celebrate your deliverance. If you need further deliverance, I'll actually do a live video for you on Facebook with you. You know, in, in Messenger, I'll do a video message with you, and I will pray with you for further deliverance if you need deliverance, because if God delivered me, he'll deliver you. Thank you, Jesus. He's no respecter of person. He is for every person. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo, glory to God. That's why people wrote in last night out of the radio show and said that they were healed and delivered and set free because Jesus Christ is still on the throne. People were writing to me saying they loved the show last night. Thank you, Jesus. He's still on the throne. Thank you, Jesus. For those who desire to give, we now have PayPal. Your love gifts, large or small, keep helping me go around the world preaching the gospel, not just on this video, but abroad as well. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. So if you desire to give, we now have PayPal. The link will be at the top of the video for those on Facebook, the bottom of the video for those on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR. It's always the hour for revival. Glory. Hallelujah. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and to share my video on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Now, I was going to remind you that after I preach tomorrow, stay tuned because after I preach, we're going to do that baptism about 9 o'clock in the morning at the lake. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Lord, get that water warm. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. I'll see you in the next meeting in there in heaven. I love you. God bless.